that wasn't clickbait. I'm literally going to show you how you can create high budget 3D scenes in DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look at what I was able to achieve within just two hours of learning this. By the end of this short video, you will be able to recreate everything you just saw. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I might have a goodie bag full of 3D assets for you. I mean, come on, hit the subscribe button. All right guys, if I can do this, so can you. We're gonna begin by hitting the effects tab and dragging in a fusion composition clip. We're gonna head to the fusion tab and hit shift space and search for the U merge node and click add. Think of this node like a room and whatever we add to it, we're essentially putting it in the room. So what should we add? Well, let's start with a U camera. By the way, the reason we're putting U in front is because we're using USD 3D assets. We can add a U dome light. This is gonna light our scene. And then a U disc light. This is more of a directional light. Then we can go ahead and add a U render and connect it to the media out. Next, we're going to add another U merge. This is the merge node we're going to use for adding all of our 3D assets. And this merge node feeds into the other merge node, so essentially, it's all going into the same room. Speaking of 3D objects, here's a USD file of a Porsche I found online. So we're simply going to connect a U transform to this so we can control the size, and then we're going to connect that to the U merge node. We're going to click this little white dot on our merge node so we can see it in a, the viewer. And as you can see, it's way too big. So we're gonna select the transform node and scale it all the way down. Right here, you can see our camera. So we're just gonna drag that back just until the Porsche is in sight. Next, we're gonna add a ground. So press shift space and search for the U shape. Click this little white dot so we can see it. Come up to the shape selector and we're gonna select cube. Then we're gonna hit this little check mark and increase the depth, decrease the height and increase the width. Then we're gonna connect this to a U transform and connect it to our merge. Again, we can scale it up even bigger. We're gonna reselect this little dot so we can see everything together and then we're gonna drag it down. Now it looks pretty ugly right now, so let's add some texture to this ground. We're gonna select the shape node, select material, texture, and here you can upload any JPEG or PNG you want. I'm gonna select this one of concrete I found online and hit open. And as you can see, it applied it to our shape. Next, we're gonna add another shape node for the background. Again, we're gonna hit this little white dot, select cube, click the arrow, increase the height, the width, and decrease the depth. We're then going to connect this to a transform node and then connect that to our merge. Click this white dot again, and we're gonna drag it back. And then we're gonna scale it up. For this one, you can either upload another image of a sky, but for this example, I'm just gonna change the color to black. Now it looks a bit dark, so we're gonna hit the render node and under lighting, we're gonna select scene. And now we can control our lighting with the dome light by increasing the exposure and the intensity. We can also position our disc light however we want it. This is more of a directional light. As you can see, when I drag it back and forth, the lighting changes. Let's make things interesting and drag in another 3D asset. I made this one with AI. I'm gonna be explaining how I did it later. Add a transform node and connect it to the merge. Using the 3D access, we can position him how we want and we're gonna scale him up. We can also use the controls in the inspector to get it exactly how we want it. All right, it's time to animate. Select the camera and make sure you're on the first frame. Once you're on the first frame, we can position our camera how we want it to start. Once we have our camera in position, we can keyframe all of the camera movements we're gonna be using and head over as many frames as we want. I'm gonna go to about frame 130. Now we can position the camera where we want it to end. As you can see, there's a bit of transparency, so I'm just gonna select the transform node and scale that up. And now as you can see, we have our camera movement. We're gonna hit the spline, check all these boxes, hit this box, drag a box over all these and press S. I'm sure by now your computer's about to blow up. So what I do for smooth playback is I hit playback at the top of my screen, then I select render cache and select user. I'm gonna hit effects and drag on an adjustment clip. We're gonna add some effects to this to make it look more cinematic. So our scene still looks a little bit dark. I'm just gonna drag up the shadows in the color page as a quick fix. Then I'm gonna search for a vignette and drag that on and drag up the softness. Then I'm gonna apply a radial blur and turn it down a little bit. And then an edge detect. Select this box, drag up the blur and turn down the brightness. Then I'm gonna drag in some snow, 
set the composite mode to screen and turn down the opacity quite a bit. You should have something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna make sure you never run out of 3D assets. This first website is a Chinese website and it's all written in Chinese, so you're gonna translate to English. The domain is up in the top here. I'm not gonna try and pronounce that, but this is by far the best AI 3D model generation I've seen. The details are insane and you get 20 free generations a day. Next up, we have the website CGT Trader. We're gonna simply select the file format as USD or USDZ and we're gonna select free. For example, we can type in car, and here are all the free cars we can download. And I literally found a free castle you can download off this website. Here's what it looks like inside DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, I have my camera here, and I animated it going around this post. Another thing you can do is select Render, Settings, and select Motion Blur, and it's going to create a really realistic effect. And of course, all of the assets I used in this video are linked in the description.